Dear Pragna Patel, founding member of the South Hall Black Sisters and Women Against Fundamentalism, thanks for joining us today. I'm really thrilled to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. So, um, women is, are, are leading the revolution in Rojava. Do you think the Kurdish woman struggle um, is, uh, is uh, inspiring for the woman movement in Europe as well? Uh, the Kurdish women's struggle is inspiring to women's movement throughout the world. Um, it, it really is a beacon of hope in what is a very difficult and challenging time globally when the forces of darkness and authoritarianism threaten to engulf um, the entire world. We see that the Kurdish women's struggle is, is um, standing tall, is fighting for principles that we, you know, only dream about and putting them into, trying to put them into reality, make them a reality, equality, justice, freedom. These are all really important democratic values that uh, we, start, we all subscribe to. But the Kurdish women, um, the brave, the courageous Kurdish women are actually trying to ensure that these values are embedded in social relations, in the social structures of their society. And in doing so, they're leading the world. They are pioneering um, heroes of ours who are showing us that it is not enough to dream about these things, but to actually create and make these things happen. 8th March, the International Women's Day um, is approaching. What is your solidarity message to your Kurdish sisters? My solidarity message to my Kurdish sisters is we owe you an immense debt of gratitude for all that you are doing, for showing the world how democracy is realized, how to realize democracy, for showing the world what bravery and courage look like. We have many battles to fight as women on many fronts. It is a truly inspirational struggle that is being waged by the Kurdish women's struggle. We send our solidarity and sisterhood, and we know that you don't just fight for Kurdish women, but you are actually fighting for all women everywhere. Dear Pragna Patel, founding member of the South Hall Black Sisters and Women Against Fundamentalism, thanks for joining us. Thank you for your comments today. Human rights activist and woman rights um, defender Rosa Sali, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, so the 8th of March, International Working Women's Day is approaching. Um, do you think women's leading... Um, revolution in Rojava is inspiring the women's movement in Europe as well. Yes, definitely. I mean, the freedom of movement and the women who've been so active and in the forefront of fighting and also in all aspects of the sectors, uh, they are involved and trying to reach equality, um, I think is ins inspiring to myself and to many other women uh, internationally around the world. Um, and Personally, I've become very active because when I see um, the women are, you know, kind of fighting for equality and um, wanting to achieve that um, uh, equal representation is so important. And that's made me uh, to be more active and really speak out more. You do also have participated in um, in uh, latest Imralı delegation uh... It was an online meeting. Um, yes, it was a very was, meeting. Yeah, yeah, what was the outcome from that meeting? Very short, very briefly. Also, I would like to ask you the uh, Öcalan's Kurdish leaders, Öcalan's ideas about the woman equality. Uh, uh, do you think uh, the women in Europe today uh, know enough about the Öcalan's ideas? 
I think it, it is spreading. Yes, definitely. I mean, the culture principle, as I think, um, you know, the theoretical is behind it is Ocalan. And um, many people are getting to know that notion, what actually means to have representation of women, like culture of men and women. And I think um, through that, um, you know, we can achieve equality of both sexes. Um, so yeah, I mean, the delegation was very inspiring to me. There was many impressive uh, delegates involved. And uh, one particular was used to be in the Iceland government. So it kind of gave me hope that, you know, the Kurdish people are not alone and we have international solidarity and people who care about democracy and human rights and uh, women's rights in, in, um, in the Middle East and especially in Turkey. Turkey has become uh, very repressive of women's rights and women being uh, violence is being used against women uh, as a tool of war. And, and I think that is um, uh, we found out from you know our fact finding of our delegation that you know violence is used against women um, enormously, and uh, we want to. Uh, we've, we have highlighted that um, issue uh, in the report and I hope uh, many people will read the report and uh, the report will also be circulated to a uh, member of parliament and um, human rights advocates and many other groups around the, the world. The women, uh, especially the Kurdish women politicians in Turkey are, uh, are under, uh, under a very big pressure under the Turkish uh, Erdogan's regime. So um, what is your solidarity message, first of all, to uh, Kurdish women uh, in Turkey, the politicians especially, and uh, also um, uh, to, the, to the struggle on the 8th of March, um, very short, very briefly. Uh, yes, I would. My message would be for the women is to stay strong and that you are not alone. That we are actually with you in spirit and we understand your struggle, uh, and um, we will do everything we can internationally to support you and uh, ask for the European Human Rights and many the United Nations um, about uh, women's rights violation by Turkey and. And uh, I think the struggle um, to stay strong, really, that's my kind of message to the women. Dear Rosa Salih, human rights activist and uh, woman rights uh, campaigner, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your message today. Dear Sarah Clean, a woman activist, a woman rights campaigner, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. What is your solidarity message to your Kurdish sisters? Just we are so inspired by what you're doing. Um, we want to support you in any way we can and learn from you. I, I just think the way that you're bringing about practical change in society, and I've been there and seen it, is, is really inspirational. We've seen how, particularly in Turkey, violence against women is increasing, and you know, we'll we'll go on supporting that, supporting you in fighting against that. And but as I say, as, and also learning from you, you're supporting us in what you're doing as well. So it's it's bringing it all together, but bringing the personal change and the societal change. And not just saying, well, we'll change society after the revolution, but making the revolution part of life. And I think that's what's so inspiring to us. So just keep on keeping on and we're with you. Dear Sarah Glynn, a woman activist and a woman rights campaigner, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your comments today. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Thank you. Um, Women rights activists from the KSN Jean and Women's Strike Assembly, um, Katie Higgins, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for asking me. Thank you. So do you think um, women's leading revolution in Rojava and Kurdish women's struggle is inspiring the women movements in Europe? 
Definitely. The Kurdish women's movement provides huge inspiration to women's movements all over Europe and for us in England, Wales and Scotland um, as an example of collective women's struggle. Um, so here we, all, we work and organise from our different positions in solidarity with each other as women, as mothers, as workers of different experiences and histories and all of this work stands with our Kurdish sisters um, and with revolutionaries everywhere fighting for the liberation of women across the world. Um, we, we seek to learn from the organization and leadership shown to us by the women's movement um, in Rojava, but in all parts of, of Kurdistan. Um, we feel we can learn from their knowledge, from their experience, from the organisational tools, uh, both in theory and in practice. Um, we can learn from their successes um, and we really hope to strengthen our own organising in our own context um, by, by building relationships with the Kurdish women's movement um, here where we are, but, but also in extending international solidarity um, with the women who were, who were fighting, as I said, in all parts of, of Kurdistan. Um, and this is part of the wider work of, of building stronger connections between international women's struggle. Thank you. Um, what is your solidarity message to Kurdish women's struggle on the 8th of March, International uh, Women's Day? So on the uh, 8th of March, we will be joining our Sisters of the Kurdish Women's Initiative here uh, to take to the streets. Um, we will send a message of strength, courage, uh, admiration to all Kurdish women political prisoners who are on, on hunger strike in Turkish prisons, um, including 42 who are being held in Diyarbakir. Uh, our message is women's struggle involves work and it involves love. It is uh, militant and joyful um, and whether we look to the women who are imprisoned by the Turkish state, the women fighting in the mountains of Kurdistan, the women building new ways of life across the different parts of Kurdistan, we see the same love and dedication that we see in the victories of the Irish sisters or Polish sisters who are fighting for reproductive justice. Uh, we see it in anti-racist movements, decolonial struggles across the world, um, from the Zapatistas to Black Lives Matter. So on International Women's Day, our message is um, that, that we call for unity and solidarity um, against feminism and, and in defense of free life and free, free society uh, everywhere. Jen Jian Azadi. Dear Katie Higgins from the Women, uh, Women's Strike Assembly and the Women Rights Activist from KSN Jean, thanks for joining us. Thank you for your message today. Thank you. Thank you.